the fun aside, the danger with living in a cultural bubble like Brooklyn is that you can start to believe your own press releases. It's the greatest place to live, work, and raise a family. Well, the bubble separates and protects us from what feels different, even threatening, and makes the 2016 election seem impossible to believe. Yeah, so we thought we'd pop that bubble and move the conversation past Brooklyn Blue, excuse me, by taking you to Brooklyn Red. Let's set the stage. 624 miles west of Fort Greene sits a rural village in Michigan with community arts, a pumpkin festival, beautiful lakes, and NASCAR. This idyllic place was founded 185 years ago as Swainsville, but as the story goes, changed its name to Brooklyn after folks from the East Coast migrated to this Midwest hamlet. Well, today, Brooklyn, Michigan calls itself a place for all seasons. And it's home to about 1,200 people. Almost all of them happen to be white, which is vastly different from our Brooklyn. Now, another difference is in the politics. While Brooklyn, New York voted overwhelmingly for that HRC person with 79% of the vote, Jackson County, the home of Brooklyn, Michigan, did its part in getting that Trump fellow elected. Now, not only did it favor Trump by a 57 to 37% margin, but 57 to 30%, but the margin of victory actually was important. Trump won Jackson County by 14,000 votes, which all by itself exceeds the 10,000 vote margin that gave Trump his victory in Michigan. Now remember, Trump won the state by 0.22%, less than 1%, y'all, giving Jackson County a piece of presidential election history. So, so. to help us break out of our Brooklyn, New York bubble, yeah. we reached out to the folks in Brooklyn, Michigan, and we're happy to introduce you to Jay Goodshow, Village Manager in Brooklyn, Michigan. Welcome to VK Live, Jay. Thank you very much for joining us. And Cindy Hubble, Executive Director of the Brooklyn, Michigan Chamber of Commerce. Greetings to you both. Thanks for being on VK Live. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Now, I don't know if we began to paint a completely accurate picture of Brooklyn, Michigan, but what is it you'd like to tell us to begin to describe your Brooklyn? Well, <laughs> it's, it's probably the polar opposite of your Brooklyn. <laughs> just uh, if you look just at the numbers of, of folks, um, we are just slightly over one square mile uh, with our 1,206 people that live here. We got to count those six uh, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that, com that compares uh, on a very minute scale, I guess, with your Brooklyn. We have slightly more population. Yeah, I have six roommates here. <laughs> Cindy, what is, what, Cindy, what is your favorite part about living in Brooklyn, Michigan? Um, it has to be the tourist season and, and the, the weather in the summer. And, and we just have an influx of, of people that come to the area because we are a resort area. And it's, it's a great place to live. It's just beautiful here. Well, little Birdie tells us that Brooklyn, Michigan is known as the heart of the lakes. You guys are surrounded. You got more lakes than Minnesota over there in Brooklyn. So how did the Brooklyn name happen? We hear this story about people coming from around this region and doing a little name swap. Is that true? Basically, the way I understand that, um, Calvin Swain was the uh, founder. He got a land grant of 40 acres and settled the community in 1832, and within two or three years, there was a vote to change the name to uh, Brooklyn, Michigan. So that supposedly came about because there were settlers here from your neck of the woods. So this Swainy guy, are there any of this, his descendants left there? Do they, like, run around and, like, have a bunch of swagger in the town since they're, like, from the Swainy line, or are they all gone? No, there's still some around. They live um, actually real close to Brooklyn in the community of Clark Lake. So th that's great. Now, with 1,200 people, I'm curious, do you see ideological divides in your community, or does everyone pretty much get along and think similarly? <laughs> I think you're going to find that here just like you do every place else. Uh, Jay, what do you think? I mean... It, it, I don't know. I'm lost. Well, yeah, I, I've only been here um, two years. I was in a couple of other communities that had some real ugly politics, and, and one of those. And 
the community by comparison. They were looking for reasons to butt heads. Um, and here we have our disagreements, but we still managed to sit down and have a beer together and, you know, have a conversation, you know, that's more civil. And we still, you know, work on each other's goals and still try to make this a you know a better place to live and work. So we just watched uh, that Saturday Night Live little skit about the Brooklyn bubble that they're going to put around the place where we live. So I wonder if you guys had any thoughts about what it must be like to live in this place. Is there like a prevailing stereotype about what goes down in Brooklyn and NYC? Well, well, I don't know how to I don't know how to best answer that. You know, when you're Give when you're living drink. in Come on. <laughs> well, you're living, you know, I I've, I've born and raised and lived in small communities like this all my entire uh, life. Yeah. Um so we tend to be more comfortable in a in a rural area where there's open spaces and things and not quite as many people as you have. So I think that's I think that's the biggest difference in probably why people left Brooklyn, New York for Brooklyn, Michigan back in the 1800s. <laughs> oh, way back then. I think we had some open spaces a little <laughs> bit more than now. <laughs> We're going to take a look well, at your population. Room. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't, isn't Brooklyn like six square miles and you have like four million people or whatever. So you, you obviously stack the people thing vertically. Well, you know, we, be, we do the best we can with what we have, Jay. We just got to, <laughs> everybody's in bunk beds. What are you going to do? You may move to 1207. <laughs> I may move out there to Michigan because there's too many people here. I'm just kidding. But uh, we want to know about your uh, politics there. Was it a surprise to you when Donald Trump won the election? We're also looking at some video here. Of, Sportsman uh, Club. Of Sportsman Club in Brooklyn, Michigan. Why don't we go to that? Tell us, are guns prevalent there in Brooklyn, Michigan? Yes, we have a very, very active Sportsman's Club. They do some international shoots and what have you that draw quite a few people from uh, multiple countries, actually, here. So it is, it is quite, a, quite a popular area. It's not an area where we want to try to take the guns away. <laughs> and were you surprised when Donald Trump won the election? Well, I'll, I'll answer this first because I'm kind of an anomaly when it comes to uh, village managers. Um, they tend to be more on the, uh, the conservative side. I put myself more onto the moderate stream. So uh, it was um, a shock to me that he won, frankly, <laughs> because I was in denial. Well, it was a sh shock to us here, too, I think, a little bit. Well, Cindy, <laughs> we know that you are uh, deeply involved with the business end and keeping the tourists happy and coming back. So we have some uh, great footage of the International Speedway that's there. But I wonder what other kind of attractions Greg and I will see this summer when we make our nine-mile drive from Brooklyn, New York, to Brooklyn, Michigan. <laughs> Road well, trip. We we actually have 52 lakes within 20 miles here in what we call the Irish Hills, which Brooklyn is right in the heart of the Irish Hills. Nice. And so you're going to find different little communities right around most of those lakes. And so that's what we're known for is our lakes and, and water sports and all that around here. So um, it's, it's just a resort area. People come from the big city here to our area just to relax and spend some family time. And what's going on at the raceway this summer? Any races or concerts? Tim McGraw, phone yeah. party? What's happening out there? <laughs> it's, um, there's a concert known as Faster Horses out here, and it's a three-day um, music um, like concert, country, yeah. country music um, concert for three days. So that's a, that's a big deal around here. That's Sounds great. Like Jay, Jay and Cindy, I imagine, obviously, you two know each other. Do you also know every single other person in town? <laughs> yeah. How many Facebook friends no. do you have? From, uh, Just about, it's, but no. It's, 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 it, we, we know more people here than you probably know in, in your Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. That's fair. Percentage-wise, I should say. <laughs> so I know that from some of the stuff we've been reading, there are two sort of mini malls that are coming online now. But is your main street, is that still a driver? Do people go to downtown? We got some great footage of a drone showing the traditional. I watched the, um, the car tour last night when they drove by the movie theater and everything and saw the McDonald's and the... BP with the taco place in, but what what's like commerce like? 
Um, commerce is great. Um, like I said, we, we have shown influx of commerce um, during the tourist season, during the summer. But we do have um, our lakes support mm -hmm. commerce in the winter. We had a bad winter this year because it was so warm. We didn't have the ice oh, yeah. to support the fishing, the ice fishing this winter. But we um, we have people here all year long, um, a lot in the summer. But mm -hmm. we do have people, tourists coming here in the winter to go ice fishing and snowmobiling. Those so, tourists, are they um, well. are they coming from like uh, as far as Chicago or the Milwaukee folks? Who are, where are most of the tourists coming um, from? We get a lot of people that come from Ohio, Indiana gotcha. area. Yeah. Okay. We, you know, the, we just found this out from our crack researcher who's a foot away from me, that there's actually a Brooklyn, Ohio, and a Brooklyn, Indiana as well. So maybe we should all just link up one day. Yeah. You guys should come. We'll have a Brooklyn conference here in Brooklyn, New York. Have either of you ever been to Brooklyn, New York? I've not. No, I haven't. I'm going a little off book here, but I am a stand-up comedian. I'm wondering if a Brooklyn stand-up comedian could come out to Brooklyn, Michigan, and maybe we could do a comedy show? Would that be possible? Can you get Greg a spot on Faster Horses? <laughs> One of the three oh, yeah. days? How about that? Come on. That, that's but, great. Yeah, I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind taking a shot at that. I'm a pretty good straight man. Yes, let's do this. We're going to do a Brooklyn to Brooklyn stand-up comedy show. How's that sound, it's Brian? It's like wife swap, Sounds but for hosts. Sounds good. Done. Excellent. Somebody print it. We'll send you the contracts today. What is one more thing maybe you'd like people in Brooklyn, New York, to know about Brooklyn, Michigan, uh, that, they, that might surprise them? Yeah, send us out on a heartwarming note. Well, hmm. <laughs> Come on, Cindy, I know um, that you have your thinking cap on as well. <laughs> give us something uh, to give us the feels. One of the things is that we said, what'd you say, 12, 1,200, six, yeah. six people? Great. We actually, um, during the NASCAR race, yeah. we become the third largest city in Michigan. Get out of here. I love nope, that. That's, that's a fun fact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. So all those people, are they staying at Airbnb or are there hotels and motor lodges and stuff? Right, yeah, because we only have one small hotel here. So um, if you don't bring your, your own camper, you're going to be sleeping out in the open. <laughs> <laughs> well, head to well, foot. It sounds good. We'll bring our own camper when we come visit. And we really appreciate you being here on BK Live. Yeah, we do. Jay Good Show, Cindy Hubble of Brooklyn, Michigan. Please join us again sometime, won't yeah, you? And right. we'll come out there sometimes and introduce ourselves. I smell a road trip. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Have an excellent day. We love you in Michigan.